Good evening and welcome to Quest for the Cup 2023. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll get you set for the U.S. Open Cup as Sacramento prepares to take on Crossfire Redmond tomorrow night in the second round of the tournament. Of course, last year the Republic went on a magical run to the finals, taking down six teams, including three separate MLS squads, before losing to Orlando City in the championship match. Sac Republic, of course, is looking to recreate that magic as they play the first game of what they hope will be another long run in this tournament tomorrow night. But before we go any further, what exactly is the Open Cup? Well, as our Kirsten Keller explains, it's the oldest and one of the most unique tournaments in all of American sports. The U.S. Open Cup is a um, is a strange tournament. If uh, if you know some of the, the viewers are soccer fans of the the English game, it's very similar to the FA Cup, where teams from every single level of American soccer, from amateur Sunday League teams all the way up to the MLS pros who are getting paid tons. Uh, are in the same tournament and it's single elimination. They can play against each other. It's a way for all the different divisions to kind of mingle, which is very unusual in all of American sports. So it's, it's a highly irregular setup and it's been around since 1914. It's been every single year with the exception of two years during COVID, it's, it's always been there. Last year, when you look at that Sac Republic team that had that deep run, what made them so successful maybe than the years past? That's another good question. I think, <clears throat> Not to get too much into the nuts and bolts of it, but as an organization, they made a priority of the Open Cup in a way that's not always very easy. You have to kind of take strategic buys in league play and make players available. And sometimes you run the risk of kind of wearing players out, but they did a really good job of that and they got lucky. You know, it could have ended in the third round. It was really dicey against uh, in, in Fresno against the Fuego, a team below them. Like it took a whole lot of um, luck, at Vitiello saves uh, to get past that. It's that's the kind of the beauty of it. Uh, but it was, and it was also just a really good team. The Sac Rep team of last year was 70 minutes into the final against Orlando City. They were they were still there. Uh, they were, they were the margins were were quite fine. Do you see any similarities with the? Sh I know the season is still so early between this year's team and last year's team that maybe give fans confidence that they'll do it again. Yeah, I think on paper, they've made some really smart moves. I mean, Mark Briggs is still the coach. Briggs, he was a genius last year. He was really smart with the way he motivated the players, the way he kind of set his team up to be there or thereabouts and really battle with the MLS teams. They had to beat three of them to get to the final, um, which doesn't really happen that often. And in the offseason, picking up player a player like Russell Ciceroni, if I'm pronouncing that right, a veteran... Yeah who's been around forever and is a winner and is really, really good and impressive. Uh, that was a smart move. You know, they still got Roro Lopez and Vitiello and all these great players. So there's no reason to think that lightning can't strike twice. It doesn't usually happen like that because it's a weird tournament and things can go wrong when they're not supposed to and weird things can happen. But there's every reason for Sacra fans to be confident. Why not? Why not do it again? So Sac Republic already knows who they will be facing. They'll be facing the Crossfire Redmond out of Washington State. And you've seen this team already play. What does Sac Republic need to do to be able to combat a team like this? Well, they need to kind of just bring to bear their professionalism. They need, they'll have better fitness. They'll have, uh, you know, professional speed, professional pep preparation, professional experience. And all those things, keep the ball, make the other team move, score early if you can. Don't let them hang around thinking they have a chance because it is an amateur team that they'll be playing. They play out of the National Premier Soccer League and they're going to be young. So make them, if, if you don't want them to believe they can win, make sure they know early that they can. Last year, Sacramento's run to the finals made the Republic the first lower division team to qualify for them since 2008. That's something Sac and every other lower division team like Crossfire Redman will try to replicate this year. Break time for us, but when we come back, we'll talk to a couple of guys with first-hand experience in the Open Cup. Republic FC head coach Mark Briggs and the team's all-time leading scorer, Cam Owasa. That's coming up. Stick around.
Welcome back to Quest for the Cup 2023. Mark Briggs, who's in his fourth season as head coach, helped lead Sacramento to that historic run last year. And while he's using the loss to Orlando City as motivation for this season, that's about the only use he has for last year, especially when it comes to the Open Cup, where he's approaching it with a clean slate completely separate from last year. It's a new tournament, a tournament that gave us many great memories last year. Um, but a tournament that we, we have to be focused on. And if we want to have another good run, we have to take each opponent, each game um, in a serious manner to give ourselves the platform to hopefully move on. How much are you able to look back on the success that you did have last year as you try and get ready and talk to your team to get ready for this year's run? Um, to be honest, I haven't looked back on it too much. Um, you have your memories, you have your emotions and your feelings, but the, the day to day it moves on. Um, I'm sure, you know, at the, the end of my career, maybe I'll sit down and look back and have some great memories. But right now, it's all about this year and all about being present and preparing for each opponent as they, as, they, as they come. Now, while you're not looking back on last year, how much are you able to use maybe the heartbreak, the, the emotions of, of losing in Orlando in that championship match as kind of fuel going forward? Do you, do you use that at all? Yeah, I think, you know, to go to go as far as we did and to not, lift the trophy like we we had wanted to and planned to obviously hurts you know and um, it gives you it gives you getting to the position that we got to gives you a little bit of hunger that little bit more um, desire to to try and achieve something special again so yes we can we can utilize everything that we went through last year as as energy um, for the guys this year was there something about last year that that let you know that you had your team had that run in them before you played your first game in the U.S. Open Cup. Were you thinking you got a special group, or was it something that just kind of unfolded as it went? And you you realized, hey, let's just let's just ride this out. We it was almost unexpected to you. Look, we we had for a belief in our group. Um, now we didn't expect us to reach the final, um, but we wanted to have a run in the cup. We had a big emphasis on uh, the Open Cup. Um, and we, we planned ahead. Um, no, I don't want to sit here and tell you how we planned because other people might take notes and learn from it. Uh, but there was a plan put in place and uh, we did certain things to accommodate us for the Open Cup and to put us in a good position to be able to hopefully get through the rounds and go as far as we can. So it's a competition that we really take seriously as a club. And obviously, after what we achieved last year, just like, like we said, just makes you even more hungrier to try and try and achieve something again. What do you have to do to get your team to not overlook when you're playing lower division opponents like you're going to be doing on Wednesday? Yeah, you, you have to treat every opponent with maximum respect because if you don't, no matter what level they're at, you can get hurt in our sport. And I think if we, if we treat the opponent in crossfire on Wednesday with the respect and we understand what they are capable of as a team and certain individuals that can possibly hurt you, um, that will automatically gain and garner um, that that. Uh, natural competitive edge that the players have so we have to treat crossfire with the ultimate respect and make sure we we put ourselves in a position to be in the draw for the next round because of the run that you had last year where you let people know that sac republic was the real deal are you do you feel like there's a bit of a target on your back not not just for mls teams but even maybe those lower division teams that are thinking why can't we do a run like sac republic did yeah for sure i think I think for the for the MLS teams, the guys that are at the higher level, they're probably like well, that can't happen again, you know. Um, and for for our level teams and lower, people are probably thinking, why can't we do that? Why can't we do what Sacramento did? And ultimately, no matter what team you talk to, any team at our level or below would have loved to have gone on the journey we went on. And so there is a there is a you know a, a target on our back now, and that's good. That's what that's what happens when you're successful. Those targets get bigger, and people want to take you down. So we have to be able to handle those targets and move forward with those targets on our back. What's the vibe like with your team ahead of this U.S. Open Cup? Are, are you sensing some excitement? Any conversations about last year and trying to repeat that? What are you get, hearing from your guys? Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't heard any of the guys uh, talking about last year because they would have been told to shut up and stop talking about it. Um, the past is the past, um, but we've got a group that we believe is better than what we had last year. So we have to make sure that we we reach 
our goals and we obtain our targets by being focused and being present and putting in the work um, every single day. And I think if we do that, then hopefully we can have a, a good league campaign and a good Open Cup run again. Now this past weekend, Briggs became the Republic's all-time wins leader, notching his 41st as head coach with a dominant 5-0 win over Louisville City to maintain their undefeated record to start the season. And with a 3-0-1 record, Sacramento's atop the USL standings with 10 points. Now we got the head coach's perspective. For the players' point of view of this tournament, our son Cunningham caught up with Cameron Owasa, the franchise's all-time leading scorer. Their conversation starts with Owasa talking about the transition from player to spectator. It's been great getting a chance to still be a part of it. Growing up in Sacramento and then obviously playing for the team, it's been such an honor. And so to continue to be a part of it, even though I'm not actually playing, it's, it's super cool. As a hometown kid myself growing up in this town, and you are too, how fun is it to be able to do what you do in your home community and still be on that high level? I mean, it's cool regardless, but then, you know, getting that extra level of being doing it in the hometown, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. I got to wonder, your first year not being with the club in front, as, as a player last mm -hmm. year, to so see as far as they go, how much FOMO set in, man? I was really jealous. <laughs> yeah. I was really, really jealous. But, I mean, at the same time, it was incredible being able to watch the run and just – Still feeling like I was a part of it again just because the city was so excited about it and I know all the guys still and I was talking to them and still have a good relationship and so I, I got to live vicariously a little bit. How difficult is it to be in a season where you're concentrated on what's in front of you, your league, guy, you know, teams that you compete with day in and day out, but then to disrupt that in-season tournament and play against a team you might not know really who's on that field in any given moment, how different is that as a player? It's a lot different, and the biggest thing is managing kind of the stress on the you know that it takes on your body. Uh, soccer players were kind of used in an ideal week of playing one game, and so with the cup, those games are always on Wednesday. So you'll have your league game Saturday, cup game Wednesday, mm. league game Saturday, and so when you start you know stacking up all those games and two game weeks, uh, it really takes a toll. And so that's part of the thing that was so impressive about the run is it really takes the whole roster, and that's why you typically see all the MLS teams because those rosters are deeper. They're they're the ones that make the deep runs, but for a USL team, it shows a lot about just the quality of the roster and the quality of the players that are, that are there. And I imagine for someone like Mark Briggs and his staff, it makes it even harder to try to kind of strategize how you're going to prepare for this game, which is a league game, and then the cup game. How different is that when you're trying to fit in a game and, you know, you might have three games in a week? Absolutely. It's a, it's a big it's a big decision for them, and it's hard. you got to tell a guy like Rodrigo Lopez, who's, you know, that's your guy, right? And like, hey, uh, you're not going to play this, this game on the weekend, maybe, or you're going to play a limited role in, the, in this game on the weekend because we need you fresh for Wednesday and you know as a competitor uh, it's, it's really hard to kind of take yourself out of it especially because you only get so many games with, with soccer um, so having to sit out or, or come off the bench on, on a game where you're used to playing every minute um, mentally it's a little bit of a struggle but at the same time like if you can look back on the season like last year and see that run that you made it makes it all worth it. That, that old cliche iron sharpens iron you know you're going up against maybe some upper echelon tier opponents mm -hmm. you're yourself an MLS player who had MLS experience to be in a USL team do you see a vast difference in talent when you go up against an MLS team I would say there's you know three four five guys on MLS rosters that are you know different class at, for the most part and, and typically those are the designated players that are getting paid millions so they should be you know a yeah. cut above uh, but I think in general especially a, a team as good as the Republic most of the guys um, can hold their own against the vast majority of the you know the guys filling out the MLS rosters at least when you sit down ahead of you and you look at the season ahead and you're looking at not only the season and the success you want to have there but the cup itself what defines success for a cup run I mean obviously getting to the championship round I imagine would, would be that number one thing but do you kind of circle anything man if we can just get to this semifinal round I think it'll be a good season so obviously the goal is to win the cup right and the Republic didn't win the cup last year but to make it to the final I mean that's an unbelievable accomplishment I think it was the first time in like 15 years that an ML our USL team has made it to the championship to find success I mean I don't know it, it, it kind of changes year by year just kind of based on how you're playing and and how things are going uh, there is a, a reward for being the last USL team standing mm. and so I would say that's probably the the first goal to get to is hey let's be the last USL team and then after that it's hey let's get to the final and ultimately try to lift that trophy I'm putting you on the spot. Is there any, do you have any kind of prediction of the, how this thing will go this season? Whew, I mean, I would like to say they're going to get back to the final, but it's such a crapshoot. I right. mean, it, the 
who you play, it's so random where you play. I mean, they're literally like pulling names out of a hat to say, oh, you're playing them and you get a home game or you're an away game. So it, it is a lot of luck that goes into it. Again, those midweek games, having to travel brings a whole nother element into it. So um, there's a lot of luck that goes into it and hopefully we get the luck of the draw and can make another deep run. Putting that media analyst hat on and you're looking at this club this season, once the cup, the cup is what it is, the season ahead, we're so early on with this season. Mm -hmm. What do you expect for this USL season for Sacramento? I expect a lot of big things I mean over the course of a season you need your depth to come into play and I think that's the big thing is there's a lot of USL teams that have a really good 11 there's not a lot of USL teams that have you know 13 14 15 16 17 guys and so having guys that are chomping at the bit ready to step in and you know having the, the overall level of the team not dip when those guys come in that's a big deal and I think that's something that they've captured this year so you know I'm expecting a really good regular season for sure um, and then you know securing home games to make a big postseason push. If you want to catch tomorrow's night, tomorrow night's match in the U.S. Open Cup, tickets are still available for that game. Head on over to SacRepublicFC.com to snag yours. We got one more break, but when we come back, we're going to check in on what makes soccer so special, and that's the fans. Plus, quick check of the forecast for match day. That's all coming up. Welcome back. In the NFL in Seattle, the Seahawks fans at Lumen Field are known as the 12th man. At the Masters coming up this weekend, the fans are called patrons. And in soccer, they're known as supporters. Now, no matter what you call them, in 10 years of existence, Sac Republic's grown as loyal a fan base as it gets. And as our Eric Rucker reports, after enjoying the ride to Orlando last year, they're fired up for another run this season. If you want to find the best fans in the USL, all you have to do is come here to Heart Health Park. However, some of those fans don't only come here and pack this stadium, they also hit the road. So we had a question to Republic fans. What was your experience like for the last U.S. Open Cup? And what are your expectations and anticipations for this go around? A trip to last year's U.S. Open Cup final did not have the storybook ending Republic FC fans had hoped for. And I was so sad that we didn't make it in the final, but I was so proud of our team to make it that far. But even after a loss, <laughs> Republic fans still showed their love by greeting the team at SAC International after coming home from Orlando. During a tailgate at a recent Republic home game, we caught up with fans who made that trip to Orlando for the cup finals. For them, that was their memorable moment. It was amazing. We pretty much took over the Orlando local bar that would normally have all their fans in it, and we had so many fans that uh, they didn't even come in. For others, it was the game before the semifinal against Kansas City, a classic one on penalty kicks. That last game at home before they, they went to Florida was so exciting. It's like, yeah, we did it. We got there. As for expectations in the upcoming U.S. Open Cup? Super excited. This year we'll take it all the way to finals and this year we'll win. If they make it all the way back to that place, we will hope that they win. If they don't, then we will pray it for the next season. That's all we can do. So after a great run in the last U.S. Open Cup, obviously the excitement is very high for what is hopefully another long, deep run into the tournament. At Cal Expo, covering local news that matters, I'm Eric Rucker, Fox 40 News. All right, it's been a long, cold, and wet winter, and we're finally starting to be able to enjoy some sunshine. So what can the supporters and players expect on Wednesday? Here's Dennis Shanahan with a forecast for the game. Dennis. Well, Chris, thankfully, weather will not be a problem for fans out there at Heart Health Park. Wednesday night's weather shows a weather system. You know, some rain, some Sierra snow, but we're talking well north of us into far northern California, the Cascade Mountains. We'll see a little bit of cloud cover around Sacramento, but you don't need an umbrella. You don't need a rain jacket. As far as winds, it won't be too uncomfortable, not too breezy. We'll see winds just up to about 10 miles per hour at the time of the match, about six miles per hour with occasional gusts. So temperature wise, you'll definitely want some long sleeves on, maybe an extra layer under your sweatshirt because at seven o'clock when things get going, about 59 degrees outside at Heart Health Park, eight o'clock, 56 by the end of the match about 54 degrees. So just keep that in mind. Mid 50s with a light breeze. Chris, it should be a great night out there for fans. 
Awesome. Dennis, thank you so much. Again, tickets are still available. Just head on over to SacRepublicFC.com. The match kicks off at 7 o'clock. If you want to watch it, that's going to be on ESPN+. And this is only April when this tournament starts. Last year, it ended on September 7th. This is a long tournament. It was seven games in all for Sac Republic in 2022. Six wins, three wins over MLS squads. That one loss in the championship match to Orlando City. Trying to recreate some of that magic and it all get started tomorrow night at Heart Health Park against Crossfire Redmond out of Washington State. That's going to do it for us here on Quest for the Cup 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the game.